back to my bathroom today for episode 10 of the hair color series. We're going to be correcting hot roots and going over everything you need to know about Shades EQ hair color by Redken. Redken. Thanks for being a part of whatever this is. Meetings in the bathroom. And if you're not a part of whatever this is, come on in. Subscribe. So last time we saw each other, we removed that shadow root, which was a level four, very dark. And we did one side with lightener and one side with color remover. If you need a refresher, Here's what it looked like. Terrible. As you can see, hot roots and very, very yellow. But to note, this is a completely normal look when you are removing darker colors. So don't be scared if you do this at home and you see, oh wow, that golden cat pee tone. That's okay. So I ended up wearing it like that for a few days to give my hair a break and because I was being lazy. Get our mirror out. When I get 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy myself a mirror. <laughs> Painted redneck gold, I'm going for that. Fancy this bathroom up, cause now we're serious, yeehaw. So what you're seeing now on this root area is a nine in with 10 volume and just a little drop of red. All I did was just apply it where that band of yellow was. There was no technique. I just literally brushed it on. This nine in hair color did kind of mask my hot roots so I could buy myself some time, wear it out in public. I mean, I wore the yellow out in public, but this gives me less looks if we're being honest. Anytime I correct hot roots on myself or a client, I really like to do it in two steps. There's a ton of different ways how to correct hot roots, but what you do need to know is it is kind of tricky because the root area is very, very blonde, usually yellow. Then you usually have a darker band of color. And then in most cases, it's bright blonde or whatever bottom color, darker color. So most of the time you'll have three different projects going on at the same time. So this first step, or nine in in my case, acts as kind of like a base for what we're about to do next. If you look really close at this color, you can see that my hot roots are still visible. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but from here to here, we have hot roots. Here to here, we have a different color, and then here's my end color. So the colors we're going to be using today are Redken Shades EQ glosses, 6NA and 8NA. 6 for level 6, N for neutral or natural, A for ash. So what this is saying is it's a level 6 with a neutral base with just a little bit of ash. And same thing for the 8. This is level 8, neutral or natural with ash or blue. So a cooler hair color. They are a little bit hard to get if you don't have a license, but if you search the internet enough, You'll be able to find a site that will sell them. Sally's has a generic version of these called generic. It's in a white and black box. They work just as well. I've used them before. And the directions, the mixing steps, the timing, everything is pretty much the same. So we have a six and an eight. And the reasoning for that is because I really wanted a seven, but they were out of seven. So we're gonna mix equal parts of a six and equal parts of an eight will give you seven. We're gonna be using the kitchen scale today. I'll link this one below. It's a lot cheaper than buying a salon scale. They're the same thing. This one's about $10. So you put the bowl in, zero it out. You wanna make sure you shake these really good. We're just gonna be doing this little root area. So I'm thinking about a half ounce of each to make a total of one ounce of color. One ounce. Ooh, smells strong. So you can see it's just like water, very, very thin. Now the Shades EQ has to be paired with their branded developer or the processing solution. You can use 10 volume developer, but it's not recommended. And honestly, it does work better if you stick to this actual processing solution, you get more consistent results. Now there's two different kinds of processing solution. There's a black bottle and I believe the other bottle is pink. They're both the same in that they have 2% hydrogen peroxide. The only difference is going to be the consistency. The other bottle, which I don't have right now, but I'll show you a picture of, this is the regular processing solution and it has a consistency of water. It's really good to use in a bottle like this for an all over color application or a toner. This one is the gloss to gel processing solution, which is what we're going to use today. It has a more malleable, thicker, jelly, jello consistency, which is really good for doing precision hair coloring like this or putting it inside foil. So it's not gonna slip slippery slope all over the place. More detailed work is what I mean to say. One to one ratio, so I'm gonna match it with this. We're gonna do one ounce. You can see it's not flying off the brush. This always goes on dry hair. I'm gonna section this off into quads, very lightly kissing my roots. We're not bringing it downtown. The end goal for me is to have a very light shadow root, but not as dark as I had previously. Previously, I had a lisp there. <laughs> previously. My natural hair color is kind of odd. It's kind of like a level seven, but ash. I mean, maybe that's great. I don't really know y'all. <laughs> 
It's probably just gray. Oh, which reminds me, this shade DQ does not cover gray. It will blend gray up to 50%. Really, really good for men. We're gonna go through, outline the quad, and just tap the root. Tapping, 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 tapping. I'm not taking it vertically like I did last time for my shadow root. I'm gonna go back and do some comb work to kind of blend that, so I'm not too worried about a harsh line right now. Now you can see that it's oxidizing. Shades EQ tends to look really, really dark as soon as it hits your head, but don't be scared because once you shampoo it, it's going to be that color that it said it was, this level seven in our case. But when it's on the head, it looks dark. Outlining the quad, tap, 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 tap. Take this diagonal, tap the top, tap the bottom. Very thin subsection. So that way it can penetrate through the top and the bottom. Tap here, tap, tap, tap. Okay, diagonal subsection, really thin, tap the top, tap the bottom. The reason I'm doing this method is because I still have that hot root. So I need to apply the color to the root first versus going all the way in for the kill. I need to really focus on penetrating that root to get rid of that little band of light. Oh sh shoot, got it on the floor there. Hot roots are really challenging to get rid of, but they shouldn't be scary because they can be fixed as long as you're okay with the process. A lot of times it's not gonna be fixed in the same day. And mainly that's just because you need to give your hair a break. You don't need to try to do all that magic in one setting. Be okay with having orange hair for a while. I've already got it on the bottom of my hair. Heck, I'll just make a low light out of that. Tappy, 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 diagonal. And I would suggest to do this diagonal sectioning if you're gonna kind of mimic this same look that I'm going for, this very light shadow root. That way you don't have a horizontal line of shadow built up on the side, if that makes any kind of sense. Also, when you wear your hair up in a ponytail and everything is done horizontally, you're gonna see that line, especially if you make a mistake. So diagonal lines always, kind of like in hair cutting, to blend and trick the eyes. Bye bye, golden hair color. You were fun. I'm gonna release it down and you can see here, I'm going to leave these little air pockets, these little hoop de hoops hoops to allow the air to come in and help oxidize or process it. I'm gonna go through and do these other remaining quads, starting with this quad next. Typically in hair color, you always do either the front first or the back first. It would be unwise to do this quad, then the back quad. I want these to kind of process at the same time and the back to process at the same time. Now, if I were in a salon setting, I would always do the back first majority of the time. That way, in case it processes too fast, I can take them to the sink and shampoo out the back. It's kind of hard to just shampoo out, sh shampoo out, <laughs> champagne. It's kind of hard to just shampoo out the front. You'd have to have them bend over and that's when you start getting redneck, y'all, okay? So just do the back first. We're already making a mess. For the back, I don't know if I'll be able to show you because my I don't have enough room in the bathroom to do all that, but I'm just using the two mirror method. We're using this piece of junk mirror with this mirror, <laughs> what we can see over the poster and just doing our best, okay? And then I'll probably have my daughter go over it tonight so she can get a little practice in. So that's how you do the back. You just do your best. <laughs> Before I start going, I want you to see now how it started to oxidize, turning really, really dark. And it's not gonna be that dark again, but you can see I just did that little sliver now, if I left it like this, it would of course be a harsh line, but we're gonna go through and blend it last. So here we have it after I've applied it. The back kind of got a little silly on me. To blend this together, I'm gonna take a very fine tooth rat tail comb and I'm gonna start at the scalp and kind of push the color down like this and kind of comb it through. It looks a little scary, but as long as you didn't oversaturate this with color where it's too much color, it's going to be okay and it's not really going to touch the ends. Now I did make a couple mistakes right here where I got color too far down. So I'm going to just kind of comb this through so there's not a harsh line. What we're trying to avoid is that line of demarcation. We want this to blend and look like my roots naturally melted into this color. Whoa, hang on, I just saw that. You can start anywhere. You can go horizontal or diagonal. I'm just gonna go diagonally. And I'm starting at the top, the very, very top of my scalp or the root. And I'm pushing out the hair color and combing it all the way through. So I'm grabbing that color from the top and whooping it down. Just gonna grab it through, take big chunks, take the bottom, comb it through. 
can already see the difference how this one looks more melted versus this one having a stark line. And I also made a mistake on this side where I got the color down too far. So I'm just gonna comb that through. That is now going to be a low light. Oh, wow, okay, I'm making all kinds of mistakes. Well, there we have it. Okay, so again, taking the color, combing it down. Melting that through. Now, if you have a buildup of color on your comb where you can see the actual color compacting on this comb, you need to rinse that out because if you comb this to the ends, it's going to color the ends of your hair. It's a demi-permanent, so it's easy to get rid of, but if that's not the look you're going for, just be mindful of that. If this process kind of makes you nervous, just do this. Start at the top, comb it through the middle and leave out the ends or put conditioner on the ends so when you comb through it, it acts as a barrier and it's not going to color it. Same thing in the back, taking it, combing it through. Big sections, combing it through, top and bottom. I thought I saw some dark in there. Yep, yeah, there it is. So I've got a little stripe. I'm gonna have to just make that a low light. If you do this with a much darker color, five, four, three, two, one, to avoid this hairline that this would give you, this you can take some of the processing solution on your finger and just kind of do little circles and just leave it like that. Don't wipe it off. That will blend that together. Same thing with permanent hair color. If you're using permanent hair color, about midway through the processing time, take a little developer, you should be wearing a glove though, and doing little circles. That way you can have a soft hairline and not the I just got my hair colored look. We don't want anyone to know we've been in the bathroom doing this ourselves. 20 minutes for this, room temperature, so no heat. Put a cap over it if you want. This is our Dollar Tree one. I'm gonna shampoo it out with Olaplex number 4P, one of my favorite blonding shampoos, just so I can kind of refresh my blonde because I don't have time to do a toner today. It is getting a little yellow on me on the ends, but this should help kind of cancel that out. Um, and the conditioner, probably, honestly, I've got some Pantene Pro-V in there. I'm probably just gonna use that, cause why not? Okay, so I'll be back in 20 minutes. Here we have it. Here we have it. This looks much better. Still have the blonde, but the root, when we dissect this, is not so much of that reddish gold tone. And it's a nice melted line and not a drop off. That's pretty close to my natural color here in the middle. The top is a little bit darker, but it will fade. Does it look okay back there? I'm going to go in with this X Mondo BDSM. Oh, BDSM Slick and Defined Bomb. <laughs> I never read the name. <laughs> I've been using it especially on my braids, but it makes my hair look a little bit thicker. But there, it gives it like a little bit of a texture. Use your free combs. All right, there we have it. So let me know your thoughts, what you think in the comment box. I can't wait to see you next week. Next week, as usual, I have no idea, but I do know that we're meeting together on Sunday here in this bathroom, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So I will see you next time for something cool. Something cool.